President Biden is expected to announce a re-election bid as soon as tomorrow. Sources tell CBS News that he is set to announce senior West Wing official and longtime Democratic Party activist Julie Chavez Rodriguez as his campaign manager. The president spent the weekend at Camp David with the First Lady and senior aides to sort out the final details of the campaign. And tomorrow would mark the, the anniversary of the day he announced his last presidential bid in 2019. So for more, Let's bring in two of my CBS News colleagues who broke this story over the weekend. Ed O'Keefe and Finn Gomez join me now. Ed is CBS News senior White House and political correspondent, and Finn is CBS News political director. Great to see both of you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, Ed, I want to start with you over on the North Lawn because, um, you know, Biden is has been teasing a little bit of this. I know you got a chance earlier today to throw a question at him. I want to play a little bit of that, and then we'll come back to you. Mr. President, why do you want four more years? So I get to answer your question. Why should America give you four more years? Stay tuned. All right, Ed, so uh, good effort there. I guess we will have to stay tuned. Tell us a little bit about what we should expect from this amount, announcement that could come tomorrow. We anticipate it's tomorrow. Caitlin, we anticipate it's coming in a short video message, similar to what many other candidates up and down a ballot these days do. What's unclear is whether he's going entirely into launching the campaign now for certain or perhaps teasing uh, the announcement in, in another way. Uh, it looks like it's leaning towards a full-throated announcement with staffing plans in the works. We reported, Finn and I, over the weekend that Julie Chavez Rodriguez who has served as an assistant to the president and a senior advisor, which is about as high as you get in the West Wing staffing lineup before chief of staff and deputy chief of staff, is going to leave the White House to run the campaign. Uh, she is a longtime Democratic Party activist, uh, worked for Kamala Harris's short-lived 2020 presidential campaign, was active especially in California politics for a while, is the granddaughter of the labor leader and civil rights leader Cesar Chavez. So, yes, putting her in this position is a nod to the power of the Latino vote and, and that coalition, especially in the Democratic Party. We can expect to see others who have been active in recent Democratic Party politics involved in the leadership of the campaign day to day, but also in more ceremonial chairman roles uh, that will be held by various Democrats across the country. And then we wait to see how the president starts scheduling things officially and out on the campaign trail. And what will a campaign look like? Will it be events like the ones he held today in the Rose Garden with the National Teacher of the Year or with the union group that he's meeting with tomorrow here in Washington in sort of official capacity, but has an announced candidate doing things, saying things that a Democratic presidential candidate would do to motivate the base? And the other big question is how much money can this campaign raise and how quickly? One person I spoke with this afternoon who's been involved in the planning for this said that the big focus the rest of this week especially will be raising as much money as possible early on for an effort that Democrats have told Finn and I now is likely going to cost the campaign itself and the super PACs who love them and are working with them in a semi but not officially coordinated way at least two billion dollars to win in 2024. Wow. I mean, that is such a staggering number when you think about it, especially for an incumbent president. But I want to talk a little bit more about the campaign manager, Rodriguez. I know you and Ed broke this news. Ed mentioned a little bit more about her. But what's the significance of this choice? Uh, Julie Chavez Rodriguez. I spoke to um, uh, several uh, senior Democratic operatives and, and, and uh, consultants uh, in the Biden, from Biden world and outside of Biden world, who heartily applaud this. As Ed said, this uh, this pick is a big nod to the Latino electorate. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it will be a, a crucial component of the president's reelection strategy. Um, and also the fact that, you know, you know, she is, uh, a, as Ed mentioned, the granddaughter of, of, of Cesar Chavez, the, the, the iconic Latino leader, labor leader. Uh, but she is, in, in her own right, uh, a, a big, significant leader uh, uh, from in politics uh, for, for years. I mean, she, as, as she was the deputy campaign manager in 2020. She was the traveling chief of staff for Kamala Harris uh, during that primary race. Um, but she's also someone who's well respected amongst across the democratic, uh, excuse me, democratic uh, groups, and and um, and, uh, and and it's something that 
It's something that I've heard heartily uh, in speaking to many Democrats throughout the day. The Latino vote is so interesting, too, because as yeah. you've reported extensively, there are concerns that Republicans are definitely making, making inroads, inroads right. with, with Latinos. So interesting pick there. Um, Ed, I'm very curious about the timing of this, because I feel like in last, you know, previous conversations that we all have had and in our own reporting, a lot of Democrats have kind of enjoyed just watching Republicans kind of squabble it out and figure out their um, own pathway for uh, their nominees. Why now? Why do this now? Tomorrow is the fourth anniversary of when he launched his 2020 bid. This is a guy who likes when, as he likes to say, when hope and history rhyme, mm -hmm. quoting that Seamus Haney poem. Uh, and so this is good symmetry for him. He likes that. Uh, it also just gets it over with. He uh, is known to be sort of frustrated with the questions that we continue to shout at him. As he said to us at an earlier event today that we couldn't quite hear, he said, I've been telling you I'm going to do this, right? He said it when he got back from Ireland. He had said it to a certain weatherman on another channel that we won't talk about. Uh, people may know which one I'm talking about. He has said it in other interviews that it was an intention to do this. So just get on with it already. The reason some Democrats were hoping he'd wait is, yes, they love seeing the media space focused on Donald Trump versus everybody else and what Republicans are doing politically and legislatively across the country on issues like abortion rights, gun control, education, to essentially set themselves up for some real, what Democrats believe to be, easy general election attacks on issues that voters don't side with them on. But they also just know that he wasn't facing a serious primary challenge. Earlier this year, late last year, there was concern in the Biden camp that California Governor Gavin Newsom, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, somebody else might try to mount a primary challenge against him. But they all did the math. They looked around and realized they can't beat him. Mm -hmm. Despite the age issue, there was no reason to go after him. And so while there is token opposition from Robert Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson to activists, they know he's basically got the party behind him. And the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, intends to work on his behalf with his campaign to make it happen. So, yes. But the other, again, like we said, the issue now is spend the next few weeks, especially raising as much money as possible to get started. Watch super PACs start to do the same. Expect to see donors start opening up their wallets to do it. There is still scheduled to be an event here in Washington on Friday for mm -hmm. about 100 or so donors who've raised at least a million dollars for the campaign in the past and are being asked to do so again. We'll see if they stick around through Saturday to get another briefing from other administration or campaign officials. Um, and so it's, it's getting started. But for now, what he can do mostly is raise the money, hire out the staff, set them out across the country, and watch as Republicans continue to fight amongst themselves over who should be their nominee. And speaking of some of those Republicans fighting amongst themselves, uh, Finn, the Republican race has already been well underway, but we're still waiting for some candidates to get in. Sure. Ron DeSantis, of course, everybody's eyeing him to see what he does. Um, he has been out um, across uh, the world, really, right. on this um, uh, a tour. Um, I want to play a little bit of sound when he was in Japan. Uh, he was asked about the presidential race here at home. Let's listen to, to that. Governor, I'll we'll show you falling behind uh, Trump. Any thoughts on that? That's I'm not a candidate, so we'll see if, uh, if and when that changes. All right, so... DeSantis is essentially on a, a trade mission trying to represent right. Florida, which I also think is really interesting that he's doing that. Um, what do you make of what he just said there? I mean, we've seen for the past several weeks Donald Trump going after him and after him. And now his super PAC, DeSantis' super PAC, or one associated with him, is starting to uh, sharpen their knives a little bit, too. What do you make of, of what he said there? Uh, I think it's a little little head bob of uncertainty, mm -hmm. frankly. I mean, but I, I do think that, you know, you're seeing all signs indicate that he is going to jump in after after this le his legislative sessions over in Tallahassee, uh, his his camp, you know, his uh, his uh, his pack, his super PAC uh, uh, is is roving up their activity and they're being more vocal and in criticism towards towards Trump. But I also think that, you know, the, the fact of the matter is that the, the Ron DeSantis does not do media. He does. Mm -hmm. He rarely does interviews yeah. with mainstream outlets. He really does these 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 um, just 
you know, he, he doesn't go, he, unless it's friendly outlets, he really doesn't do this. And I think this is a disservice to him because it, you know, because once this, and if he does jump in and if he's on the debate stage, uh, you know, it, he, will he be prepared to uh, encounter Donald Trump and some of the other, some of the other potential rivals, right? And yeah. I think this world tour is, a, is an effort to bolster his foreign policy credentials. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that he's also doing it. It's unusual that he's doing this just before the G7 meets in Hiroshima mm -hmm. next month okay. as well. But I, but 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 this is this is I believe a weak spot for him. And it just over, you mentioned trade, uh, CHP. I think it is interesting that you know uh, that you know Trump has been for years so so critical of uh, trade with Japan, and the fact that he's very positive here in his comments towards uh, the prime minister, I think might be a, a, an effort to. To, to challenge Trump's uh, position on yeah, that. Yeah, one of those those contrasts that we may be seeing right. play out. Um, it's also interesting, too, how he seems to be, you know, wanting to present Florida as its own country, essentially, right? right? right. I mean, yeah. being being the head of that um, of that state. Um, I know you just got back from Iowa, too, yeah. where uh -huh. uh, you and Robert Costa talked to Mike Pence. Did you get a sense from uh, voters? I mean, it seems so early, and it seems like they're just sussing out the field right now. Sure. But does there seem to be an appetite for some kind of turning of the page, some someone like a DeSantis or a Pence, or are people just kind of waiting to see what happens? I think it's still Donald Trump's game at this mm. point. I mean, it's still, I mean, he was not in Iowa this weekend at the mm. evangelical uh, faith and freedom um, event that was occurring in Clive, Iowa. Uh, but uh, I, I do think still with his massive presence, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, there is room. I mean, uh, Mike Pence got a standing ovation uh, by the thousand plus crowd that was mm -hmm. there. Uh, you saw even Vivek Ramaswamy, the, 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 the multimillionaire entrepreneur, getting a positive response from the crowd there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, uh, he was even, you know, he, you saw others. They were there, um, including like Larry Elder. You saw Asa Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there is room, especially in that state where the evangel evangelical vote is so strong. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, you know, you will see yeah. those efforts to, to get some uh, to get some traction there. Yeah. A lot yeah. of competition still to go. And right. we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, Finn, Ed, thank you both. Thanks for breaking some big news over the weekend, and we will uh, talk to you soon as this campaign gets underway.